Hello, I'm Pam Lugo. On behalf of the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library, we would like to welcome you to the lore and legend of dragons as told by postage stamps. The story told here is the work of Lynn Toes of Dolores, Colorado. Each stamp shown is identified by its country and Scott catalog number. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time to view this video and hope to see you in other videos produced by the Rocky Mountain Philatelic Library. Let's get started. Dragons, fire-breathing monsters, fearsome scaly creatures. Stories about dragons have been part of world folklore for centuries, telling of creatures lurking in caves, attacking villages, and destroying the landscape. They fly about on their powerful wings, giving heroes a chance to prove their skills. Possibly the earliest mention of fire-breathing monsters is in the biblical book of Job, where the sea monster Leviathan is described. Out of his mouth go burning torches, sparks of fire leap forth. Out of his nostrils smoke goes forth as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His breath kindles coals, and a flame goes forth from his mouth. In his neck lodges strength, and dismay leaps before him. There are many stories of heroes who dare to attempt to slay these monsters. St. George is a good example. While traveling in Libya, St. George happened upon a princess about to be fed to a dragon. By making the sign of the cross, St. George was able to kill the dragon and rescue the princess. In an epic German poem, the hero Siegfried slew a dragon, was dipped in its blood, and became invincible. Basat, in the Turkish tales of Dede Korkut, went in search of a dragon who had killed his brother. The dragon, Tepigaz, tried to kill Basat on many occasions. Basat always survived and later killed the dragon. The island of Iceland is home to four guardians, a dragon, a giant bird, a bull, and a hill giant. When King Harald of Denmark tried to conquer Iceland, he was attacked by the four guardians. The king was defeated and sailed back to Denmark, never to return to Iceland. The Lindworm of Klugenfurt, Austria, was a water dragon that caused floods. To get rid of him, a huge tower was built and brave knights hid out there. As bait, a bull was tied to a chain. The dragon ate the bull. Wiggling on the chain like a fish on a hook, the knights killed him. The people of Klugenfurt were so proud of their knights that they built a fountain in the shape of the slain dragon. The dragon of Saranda in Albania was eating one person every day. A brave young man brought a donkey out to the dragon. He offered himself as a sacrifice, but he told the dragon to eat the donkey first. Unknown to the dragon, the donkey's load contained a burning coal. When he ate the donkey, he began to burn up. The dragon called for water, and the Bistrika River overflowed into a pool. The dragon drank from the pool until he blew up. Ever since then, the pool has been known as the Blue Eye Spring, named after the color of the dragon's eyes. Dragons have been part of Chinese folklore for centuries. They were the centerpieces of China's earliest stamps. They had power over water, rainfall, hurricanes, and floods. Dragons were also symbols of power, strength, and good luck. The Emperor of China often used dragons as a symbol of his power. In China, people who are outstanding and of high quality are referred to as dragons. One proverb is, hoping one's son will become a dragon. Lord Yi was fond of dragons. He painted them on the walls and carved them on the doors and beams of his house. A real dragon in heaven heard about Lord Yi and his love for dragons. The dragon was deeply moved and decided to thank him in person. You would think that Lord Yi would have been happy to see a real dragon. In fact, he was so scared that he ran away. So people knew that Lord Yi did not love the real thing. This became the Chinese saying, Lord Yi's love for dragons means false enthusiasm for something. 
In Indonesia, water dragons are revered because of their power to control rivers and floods. There is a folktale from Lapong in Indonesia about a boy named Naga and his sister Ranu. One day Naga finds an egg near the river. Ranu tells Naga not to eat the egg because it looks like a dragon's egg. Ignoring her, Naga eats the egg and soon becomes hot and thirsty. To feel better, Naga gets into the cool water and drinks. Then his skin grew rough and scaly, and he changed into a dragon with yellow gold skin and golden horns. His sister discovered what had happened and vowed to stay with him. With Ranu riding on Naga's back, they wandered together. One day they stopped by a lake, and Naga went for a swim. Ranu waited for him on the bank. Naga dove to the bottom of the lake and became so content that he forgot all about Ranu. Weeks and months went by. While Ranu waited for him, she became more and more worried, not eating or drinking properly, and finally became ill and died. Soon after, Naga remembered her and came to the surface. He spotted a bead necklace he had made for her that was still around her neck. He began to weep out of sorrow for what he had done. The lake is now called Lake Ranu. Naga is the sacred magical dragon of the lake, watching over his sister's final resting place. The Maori of New Zealand also have guardian dragons called Tanawa. Arita Ru was a female Tanawa who came from Hawaii. She had 11 sons who went on journeys of exploration, each digging a trench with his nose that became the many branches of the Hokihanga Harbor. A Tanawa named Tuhiranga also came from Hawaii. He joined the legendary explorer Coop in the discovery of New Zealand. Coop put him in Cook Strait as a guardian dragon. In the fable of the Hobbit, Bilbo was a quiet, loving hobbit who meets a dragon named Smog. He has a conversation with Smog in the dragon's cave. Well, I really must not detain your magnificence any longer or keep you from much needed rest. Ponies take some catching, I believe, after a long start. And so do burglars, he added as a parting shot as he darted back and fled up the tunnel. It was an unfortunate remark as Smog spouted terrific flames after him. As Bilbo runs up the slope, Smog's head crashes against the opening behind Bilbo. Luckily for Bilbo, Smog's whole head and jaws could not squeeze through the opening. Smog's nostrils sent forth fire and vapor to turn Bilbo into a crispy critter. Bilbo stumbled blindly forward in great pain and fear. Bilbo was feeling rather pleased with his conversation with Smog, but his mistake shook him into better sense. Never laugh at live dragons, Bilbo, you fool, he said to himself. And it became a favorite saying of his and later became a proverb. In the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter snatches a golden egg from the nest of a horn-tailed dragon while flying on his broomstick. Harry flew higher. The horn's tail head rose with him, her neck stretching to its fullest extent and swaying like a cobra before a snake charmer. The dragon let out a roar of exasperation. He was like a fly to her, a fly she was longing to swat. He was too high to reach now. She shot fire into the air. Her jaws opened wide. Come on, Harry hissed, swerving above her. Come on, come and get me. Up you get now. And then she reared spreading her great black leathery wings at last, and Harry dived. Harry was speeding toward the ground as fast as he could go, toward the golden egg now unprotected by the dragon. With a spurt of speed, he snatched the egg and was off. According to Astrid Lindgren, not all dragons are scary. In her story, The Dragon with Red Eyes, a baby dragon was found by children in a pigsty. The children cared for him, played with him, and raised him to be a good little dragon. 
then one day he flew off into the sunset and was never seen again. In their story, The Ice Dragon, Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman describe another good dragon. Grolov was an ice dragon living in a cave in the land of Noggin, the Nog. Unlike other fire-breathing dragons, Grolov's breath would freeze anything it blew upon. One day, an evil Nog named Nogbad stole some treasures from Grolov's treasure cave. An angry Grolov chased after and clashed with Nogbad. Nogbad was forced to return the treasure and sign a paper promising to be good and to never steal again. In the story Little Blue in the Land of Dragons, Mustafa Tonovic tells the tale of Blue's dragon adventure. The king's army invaded Dragonia to get dragon tears to heal their sick king. During the invasion, most of the army and all of the dragons were killed, except for one baby dragon named Notch. Little Blue found Notch crying in a cave and collected tears for the king. Little Blue returned to his king and country with Notch. After a time, an enemy army attacked. Notch defeated the enemy but received a mortal wound. Saddened by Notch's wounds, Little Blue cried. Magically, his tears healed Notch. Is this the end? Not at all. There are many more dragon stamps and stories they tell. Find some of them to collect, to read, and to enjoy. Is there a dragon behind me?